If you would turn in your Bibles, please, to the book of Romans, chapter 16. The book of Romans. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 25. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 25 and 26, we'll be reading. Paul wrote and says, Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began, but now made manifest, and by all the prophetic scriptures made known to all nations according to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith. When you read these scriptures, one of the main focus that we're going to look at today is in verse 25. Notice after 15 chapters, now into the 16th chapter of writing, going through the various doctrines of the church, going through the various aspects of, of that every Christian and believer needs to know, comes to verse 25 and says, now. Now. Notice in verse 24, how does it end? Amen. Like, so be it. It's like they're almost a conclusion. And now adds, now. To him. Who is to him? Jesus Christ Almighty to him. God Almighty, the Father, the Holy Spirit, to him. Now, to him. Who is able to, what is he able to do? This is the message today. A very simple message that is encapsulated in one word. Established. Established. The Lord has moved us in such a way over these past five years at Merrimack Valley Church is establishing us as sound in the truth, sound in the faith, sound believers, established. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in our lives. That's what the Holy Spirit's been doing in lives since, since he empowered and established the church, is establishing people, establishing them on truth, Establishing them in faith. Establishing them in such a way that they shall not be moved. When you think about the word established, the first thing we need to recognize is that it means to make stable. Not shifting with every wind and doctrine that comes our way. Sometimes a person can be very established in their say, doctrine of what they believe. I, yeah, all right, I agree with this. But they're constantly being moved to the left and the right by their own feelings. Their own feelings keep drawing them this way and pushing them that way. And they're always unstable in every way. The minute something happens in their life, they're all in an uproar. They're all downcast. They're all wondering and taking it to the furthest extreme of how bad this could be. And every feeling is the what's moving them this way and that way they're not established. Or someone can look upon doctrine and say, yes, I agree with this and I agree with this and I agree with this. But the minute that they hear something else, oop, off they go. Oop, that, that sounds really good. Boy, that one's a really good speaker and I like the way he said that. Boy, that could be true. And immediately they're not, their sound, their established is moved to the left and to the right. Being carried off with what they heard. Maybe something was said by some charismatic speaker on TV and since he's got a nicer suit than me and a big ring and evidently he's got something more going on because he's got his own TV program, evidently that must be the truth. Rather than realizing that we are established in the Holy Spirit. God is looking to establish you that you are not so easily moved. We're not talking stubbornness, we're talking established. We're talking in such a way that you are set that you're fixed. Like concrete that comes to a place where at first it's all kind of like muddy. But eventually it sets itself and is not going to be easily moved. It's firm. It's constant. It can be counted on. Hear me now. An established person, an established faith can be counted on. It's found to be trustworthy. 
it's a kind of person that you can go to and know that, that uh, if they didn't come to church for a Sunday, you're not calling up and saying, are you okay? Is everything all right? Or you're wondering, is there, have they slipped from their faith? Because you know they're established. You know they're sound. You know they're okay. God is looking to establish people in the faith. Now, when you think of the word establishment, you should think immovable, constant, firm. When you think of the word establishment, you may think oftentimes of even, think of a business. A business that, how many times you look upon businesses and they'll have the word established in it. Right? Let's say that I'm a, I just started up a business down the street. And I'm going to handle all your problems that deal with technology. <laughs> and I put established 2010. But there's another business just down the street that has been handling all the techno technology issues since 1960. And they've weathered the storms of life. They've seen the technology come and the technology go. And they say established 1960 and they've got a good name. That the good times have come and the bad times have come and they're still here. Technology has come and technology has gone and they're still here. Their name is good, you know them, and so you're going to go there and you're going to wonder now, should I go to him or should I go to 1960 or to 2010? The only way I'm probably going to get you to come to me is to give you a price to move you. Right? In other words, I have to tempt you to come away. I have to give you something willing to make you move. You're not willing to go to the, you want to go, yeah, I'm going to go to the one who I know, this guy's got a reputation. Yeah, but I've got a cheap price. And I'm going to promise you that I can do it. History? No history. I'm going to try to pull you away from the one who has the established record. If you saw a business uh, bank or any sort of financial uh, institution, and it said, Founded or established, 1929, just before the Great Depression and all the things fell apart and they were established and they're still here and they have weathered the storms. Or you've got the one who was established, 2009. The one who has been established since long ago will be the one with the name of strength that has weathered the storms of life. Put your money with us. Invest with us. We've got a record. We've got a history. We know how we're established. God Almighty has been establishing you and I. The Lord is establishing this church. The Lord is establishing you in your families. Establishing you in such a way that you're not so easily moved to the left and to the right. You're not moved with every whim or everything that may come in such a way to try to drive you, force you, attempt you away. That you have found the truth and you will sell it not. As the Proverbs say. You're not going to be tempted away because of a cheap price or an easy way. You're not going to be tempted to go this way and that way to try to make it easier for you. Because it's got a cheaper way to it. It's just an easier way. But you have instead have found yourself to be established. A blue chip company says, invest with us. We're blue chip. What made them blue chip? In the sense of that they've been established, they've weathered the storms, they've got the bank accounts, they've got the history, and that if you invest with them, you know that you're going to be rock solid even through bad times. So someone says, that's a solid investment. Why? Because they're an established company. So you and I must look at our own faith and say, what is God doing in my life? He's bringing you through the process of being established. That you're not moved. You're constant. You're stable. You're sound. You're rock solid. You can be counted on. You're trustworthy, faithful, committed. In such a way that you can be looked at and know that whether bad times come or good times come, you're set. 
You're not wayward. Abraham was counted as righteous, and it says that he did not even consider. He was not moved. He was not wayward in any way, not even in thought or action or word, never moved. And it pleased God. He was never moved from his faith, but stayed focused. Even when the promise was, looked to him like it was delayed. Year after year, and it seemed like the promise of Isaac and a child. He kept saying, you're going to have descendants, you're going to have descendants. Multitude of the stars, multitude of the sands of the sea, and I don't even have one child. He says he was not moved, not, not drawn away, but had his face fixed on the promises of God. And this is given as an example to you and I, to everyone you come across. It's not about just being all giddy up and go with God. It's not just having a, a quick step and a dance and a, and, a, and a praise in your song and you just, I'm so happy for Jesus. It's about, are you rock solid in the truth? Can you be counted on and are you sound and stable in Him? Or are you instead like the waves of the ocean that the only time you're at peace is when the winds of adversity are not there? And that the minute the winds rise up a little bit, you start showing that you're not so stable or sound anymore. You're a little on the rocky side. And the winds come and the winds come and all of a sudden it's... And all nervous until finally the master says, peace be still. And then the, sound, the calm and, oh, phew, okay, Jesus took care of it again, thank God. But has he stabled you in your heart? Has he brought a rock-solid foundational truth in your life that you're not so easily moved anymore? That when the storms come, you know who the master of the storm is. That when the winds of adversity rise up and get in your face, you know who you're built on. That the wind and the waves may crash against your house, but you have been founded, established on the rock of Jesus Christ. It says in that same verse, established, and he gives three, basically three according to. See, it's not just an issue of being established. It's established according to what? I've seen many people, quote unquote, established in sinful behavior. I've seen many people established in a lifestyle that is contrary to God. And they're not going to be moved. They've, they've been established and they're not moving. And no matter how much truth is prevailed to them, no matter how much truth is presented to them, no matter what is how or how, who loves them, or they're established, I have decided this is the person I'm going to be. And they're on sinking sand. They're in quicksand, slowly sinking. And it's coming up to their knees and up to their thighs. And they're sinking and sinking. And they're not able to move or to walk. And it starts grabbing them and getting a hold of them. But as long as they can keep saying it, and as long as that quicksand's coming up and coming up and starts getting a hold and it starts squeezing a little bit and starts coming up to the mouth and starts covering the mouth and then you can just, they lift their nose and they can just breathe a little bit more. But I'm telling you, you're in quicksand. And there's only one hand strong enough to get into that quicksand and pull you out and set you on the solid rock. And that's the nail-pierced hand of Jesus Christ. Only one is strong enough to pull you out. Do you want to be established in Him? We sometimes see people struggling in being established in Christ. But to be established in Christ means that you have to go according to what He said. And He says in verse 25, according to my gospel. According to my gospel. His good news. Christ did come. And Christ is coming again. The good news that Christ has sent forth his Holy Spirit. The good news that Christ can live in you by the Spirit of the living God. The good news that he is preparing a place for you. The good news of the promise that he is coming back. The good news that he will set you free from the sins that so easily ensnare you. The good news that he will empower you to live for, for God Almighty and the kingdom rather than the kingdoms of this world. The good news establishes you and makes you and causes you to be set in him. That the parameters have been established, the borders have been set, the rock has been planted and you're founded on him. That the winds come and they may blow back but you are not moved. They may all of a sudden come in such a way that make you turn and even you, but you will not be moved. You are established in him 
According to what? According to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a word today that many people hold as foolish. It's a word today and preaching today has been deemed as something that is useless. Who needs it? Let me tell you today. When you see that box as your final end, you'll know that you need it. When you see the sin and what it does to lives and how it ruins lives. What you thought was fun at 16, all of a sudden you find at 46 was no fun anymore. It took its toll on your life. What you thought was fun and enjoyable and that the religion and the preaching and the gospel was all foolishness because you can have a great life having fun of all the things that the carefree teen is giving themselves over to. And all of a sudden you're in your mid-twenties and you're doing the same thing and, and your friends are about 25 and 30. And then you find yourself in older twenties and thirties and you're still relatively young looking and you're still having a good time and you're still laughing and joking and you're having a good time and this gospel business is foolishness and church is foolishness and religion stuff is foolishness and you scorn it and you laugh at it and you point at that church and you look at that pastor and you look at those people and they're, they're dumb and they're stupid and it's foolishness, fanatical. Who knows? needs they're they're drawn away with falsehood and foolishness and so we're just going to keep having fun and we're going to enjoy this and you see your family and your wife and your husband getting mad at each other and your kids are disobedient and chaos but who cares we're going camping we're going to the race cars we're going to the sports game we're going to watch tv we're going to watch some x-rated films we're going to enjoy ourselves we're just going to have fun and then all of a sudden you find yourself 35 and 39 and you kind of start looking foolish as a person acting like you were 15 and 16 and foolish those ways. But you, after all, you're still a kid at heart. You're fooling yourself. I'm still a kid at heart. I'm still young inside. You don't realize you're really being played the fool. You start getting a little older and you start getting the lines and you got hair growing out of your ears you never thought you had before. You start drooping a little bit more and a little. This droops down, that pops out. <laughs> Every leg that is swung out of your bed follows up with one of these. But you're young at heart. Enjoy life. Let's enjoy all the world is offering. We're living in a good land. Thank God he's made me an American where I can be free and say what I want, do what I want. There's no cost or care. I've got individual rights. Who are you to say anything to me? That gospel business, that church business, that preaching business, this Bible business, all so foolish. Why give your life to that when you can have fun? Enjoy one another's laugh, joke, come up with coarse things, watch whatever you want. Who is he to tell you how to live? And the day passes, and the day passes, and you find yourself 50, 54, all right, almost 55. <laughs> You're still trying to be young at heart. You're still trying to put on that show, but you know... You can't, you can't do what you used to do. You can't last. And you start, so you're 50, 55, but you look like you're 70. But after all, you're young at heart. You're free spirit. Enjoy life. Why bother giving yourself to this gospel business when you can have fun and amuse yourself with the joys of this world and the deceitfulness of sin keeps you trapped in quicksand and it's coming up. And it's coming up. I know 70 and 80 year olds who are still trying to act like a kid. Still acting with the foolishness and the falsehood. Giving themselves over to this and to that. I think it's hilarious when you see a guy 70. It's hilarious and it's not. Dressing up and acting like somebody who's still 16 and 20. Trying to still be cool. Never still caught doesn't realize how foolish they are. Why bother with church? Why bother with the Bible? Why bother with truth? Why bother with this pastor? Why bother with prayer? Why bother with all those silly things and foolish things when you can do what you want and enjoy life? But the death comes. The quicksand rises. And it starts covering your mouth and you start gasping for air. And you start realizing, I'm dying. I'm dying. Don't worry. When you're dead and you're, in the, and you're in the box and you're sitting up here on the platform, 
All your buddies will gather around you and open a Bud Light to your name. You're all set. Because you had a fun life and a full life, so now... Yeah, exactly. Now. Now what? Now what? Well, we're going to write on your tombstone, avid hunter, avid golfman, avid quilter, avid librarian, avid reader, great puzzle person, beloved by family and friends, but were you beloved of Jesus Christ? Because that's the only one that's going to matter. Are you established in Christ? I've seen so many people be moved, bothered, all worked up over this little thing or that little thing. Some weakness showed up. Some strength showed up. Somebody said something. You were offended. And all of a sudden, they're all in a tizzy and their whole life has been moved. And they're all driven by this feeling and that feeling. Rather than founded, established in Jesus Christ. You know where I'm at, Lord. Offense will come your way and should come your way to establish you. What are you going to do with that offense? Well, I'm going to give them a piece of my mind when you don't realize what God is trying to do is give you a piece of His mind. Establish you in Him. I used to be one of those people who could pick up a fist real quick. I was always so ready. Going to put them in their place. Who are they to? So. And God just calms the soul. Brings you to that state where your strength is no longer in. I'm going to show them. But Lord, show me you. According to... According to my gospel, as Paul said, my gospel, Gary Cody says to you today, my gospel. And don't you, in like turn, say what? My gospel. The gospel owns you, and you own it. It's my good news. I'm telling you, it's not a different gospel. It's the one that was preached by Jesus Christ himself. Ye must be born again. You must deny yourself and follow after the Lord. The quicksand of life is coming upon you. It says also, not only according to my gospel, but also the preaching of Jesus Christ. The preaching. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about the foolishness of preaching. Do you realize that in order to find someone come right with God, all is required is words preached? Or rather, the word preached preached, that words coming out of someone's mouth moves heaven and earth and changes lives. The foolishness of preaching. All of a sudden, something happens in the heavens. The Holy Spirit moves and lives are changed. Marriages are made right. Children come under order. All kinds of things start happening. And we saw that even during our praise time where people were being moved by words. Because words are spiritual. Words convey the heart. For out of the mouth, the heart is made known. We find that according to the gospel, according to preaching, and then it says, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret since the world began. The revelation has taken place. There was a mystery. How is this good news going to work out? How is this going to take place in year past and year past and this one and that one and Abraham and Joseph and, and Moses and, and all of the great patriarchs came through and all the great prophets, but there was a mystery. They didn't see it. They didn't understand it. They didn't see Jesus Christ coming in the flesh. None of them saw. They were looking. It was a mystery kept hidden. But, verse 26, now made manifest. If they in the Old Testament were held accountable for the mystery of faith that was kept hidden, that they must be people of faith following after the promises made that was still kept in the mystery, not known, not seen, not understood, then how much more we who have received the revelation of that mystery, how much more will we be held accountable? 
to hear, to know, to understand the revelation has been made known. How has it been made known? Jesus Christ, God Almighty, has come in the flesh. Emmanuel, God with us, just as He promised. Sent forth the Spirit, just as He promised. Died, just as He said He would. Was raised up, just as He said. Ascended into heaven, just as He said. All authority has been given to me, just as He said. And has sent forth His Holy Spirit, just as He said. To empower and establish, establish the church. To be sound in Him. That we would follow after Him. No matter what difficulty comes our way, we show ourselves like Christ. We're following after Him. Yeah, but you know, every time I go to school, my friend looks at me and gives me that weird look like I'm weird. Get past it. You are. <laughs> you are. Just get past it. Every time I go to work, my employees, every time I all my co-workers... They don't now want to eat lunch with me. Get past it. There's one above who's going to eat with you and is in you. Come to realize who you are. Who knows if by doing so with the love of the Lord you might win them over. And all of a sudden your table is the one that gets full. Yeah, but I don't like being alone. Oh my. I see now what all this is centered on. Well, my neighbors, every time I go outside, they won't even talk to me. I say, hi, they don't even look at me. Oh, you wounded soldier. How difficult your life is. That the neighbor won't even say hi to you. What a suffering you're going through for the Lord. How can you possibly manage? We better pray for you on Monday night and anoint you with oil to be able to withstand someone not saying hi to you. But that's showing actually how unestablished we are. Because a person established would instead look and say, I need to try to win that person over. How can I exemplify Christ? How can I, Lord, would you show me and how can I reach over? How can I touch that neighbor, that coworker? Help me to live for you. Nobody enjoys those looks. I don't enjoy the ones that I get from here. And you're supposed to be saved. <laughs> I don't enjoy it when somebody's falling asleep. And I know I'm delivering truth in eternity that can change a life. I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy this. Forgive me. I don't enjoy that. I don't enjoy seeing people just laying on the other person. And I know someone else who doesn't enjoy it. I don't enjoy when somebody's visiting and maybe they know the Lord or maybe they don't. Maybe they've had an experience in time past and they're filled with their own church and their own religion and they're looking at you. I get that. I see that. See, you just see the back of the head of the person in front of you. I get to see all the eyes. <laughs> Through the course of an hour, do you know how many people look at that clock? I get the message. Got the message. Let's get it out of our system. Let everybody look at the clock. Let's just, there it is. Okay. Let's just get it out of our system. All right. It comes to all of a sudden realizing that, Lord, what do you, you want me established? This gospel has been kept in a mystery for years, now made known by the prophetic scriptures. It's always been there. By the prophetic scriptures, it's always been there. It's in a mystery because we weren't equipped to understand it. It's always been there. It wasn't the church was established, oh, now we need to go and change everything. But rather, it's always been there in the Old Testament. The good news has always been there. The gospel has always been there. It even says that scripture preached to Abraham the good news. In Galatians, it says, Scripture preached the good news to Abraham, that in you all the nations will be blessed. It already preached it. It's been right along. But we weren't equipped to understand it because we did not have possess abiding in us the Holy Spirit. But once we were established by the Holy Spirit, this popped off the page. 
I understand. I got it. He's got me. My eyes are open. The eyes of faith. I see. I know. I understand. I've got it. I need to tell you. Look it. I've got it. The truth of it all. What's really going on. Before I received the Holy Spirit, I read this Bible a couple of times. Understood the stories, the names, and things like that, but did not never see, understand the coming of the Holy Spirit in my life. Had no clue of what all that meant. Didn't understand Jesus the Savior. It was all with the natural mind. Didn't understand the mystery. But the mystery has now been made known. In me, in you, in us, and bringing it forth, and we are now declaring what is inside of us. Giving us a new mind and a new heart. And he is what? Establishing us in him. Set in him. According to the gospel. According to the preaching. According to the mystery that has now been made, re made real. Made uh, revealed to us. Made manifest. Things will come and shake you. Move you. Difficulties will come. You will be scorned at. You will be laughed at. Things will come your way. Things that you quote unquote don't deserve. You can even make your case. I don't deserve the way you spoke to me. I don't deserve Gary Coy doesn't deserve many ways that people have spoke to me. But that doesn't mean that God's not at work. He's probably at work in them. He's at work in me. He's at work in something. He's doing something. And Lord, I'm established in you. Lord, would you work your, your great plan? Move in us. Establish me in the faith. Cause my faith to increase. Do you think he's just going to whistle and go, and there it is? Or is he going to bring you through a process? You want faith? I'll give you faith. All of a sudden something happens wonderful and exciting and you see, look what happened. When I prayed, that person was healed. Look what happened. When I preached, they gave their life to the Lord. Look what happened and you'll have great opportunities. And then you'll go home and the neighbor will say this and that phone call and that family member and you'll get the other side. Because you're going to look. And you're going to say, look what the Lord has done. Let me tell you. Can I tell you what they... You don't want me to talk to you. And you get whacked. But that should not deter you. That's the evidence that they need the Lord. We're not moved by that because we're established. When Jesus himself said that those things will happen, if they hated me, they're going to hate you. What makes us any different? But yet we, leave our, we lead our lives oftentimes thinking that things should go better for us because we have the Lord. When in actuality, because we have the Lord, we expect both things to happen. I will see people come to the Lord. I will see people change. I will see... I will witness, I will declare the Lord, and I also know people are not going to be happy with it. Today. Tomorrow, who knows? In this, we start realizing that God is here to establish us. It says in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. It says in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. That same word, set his face, is the same word that is used for establish. That he was focused, set face, to move forward, to move towards, that he will not be moved. I have set my face of where I'm going. I'm not moved to the left, I'm not moved to the right, and even when Peter said, that no, this isn't going to happen to you. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Because he had set his face. He had established himself in knowing that this is the time. This is where I'm going. And I shall not be drawn to the left or to the right. Shall not be hindered. I am moving towards what the Father's will is for my life. I have set my, my face. I'm established. It says also, here's some scriptures for you to just... Listen to how this word established is used. It says in the book of Romans that Paul, when he was going, in Romans 1.11, when Paul was writing to them, he said, 
that I might come and impart some spiritual gift that you may be established. A spiritual gift that you may be established. It says also in 1 Thessalonians that he sent Timothy to establish them. He sent another minister, Timothy, to establish them. He wanted to go to the Romans and give them and impart some spiritual gift. Why? To establish them. It says also in 1 Thessalonians, so that you may established, so that you may be established, your hearts blameless in holiness. It says in the book of 2 Thessalonians, the Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you from the evil one. In James it says, be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. What does it say? Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. If James wrote that 2,000 years ago, I got to tell you, that should be moving us today to say, I need to be established in the Lord for the coming of the Lord. First Peter, it says, may God establish you after you have suffered a little while. What? That may God establish you after. Wait a minute. May God establish you after you have suffered a little while. Then in 2 Peter, the second letter, he says, I'm reminding you, though you know and I already know this, that you are established in the present truth. <coughs> established. Writer after writer and throughout the same word is used to establish, to set your face, to be established. Gifts are to establish. People are given to establish what? To establish us in the faith, in the truth, knowing that the coming of the Lord is at hand. That we are not moved to the left and not moved to the right and not looking behind us and not letting fret, fear, feelings to, to come into the way, but instead we're de deciding to follow after the Lord. We're established in our faith, established in this church, that when winds of doctrine come, when winds of adversity, when dissension creeps up, when things are said in such a way to cause dissension or division, instead we are established and realized and we see what's going on and we know what's we're heard and instead we're not moved by that but instead we stay faithful to the call we have set our face like Jesus on Jerusalem we have set our face on Calvary we have set our face on the cross we have set our face on heaven we have set our face on the Father's will we have set our face to follow after him and to deny all else and to realize that God is doing something in my life isn't that what we're looking for What is God doing in your life? What is God doing in my life? What is God doing in this church? What does God want to do no matter where you go? He wants to establish you more today than you were yesterday. Building blocks of faith. Fortress of faith. Foundation of truth. Pillars of holiness. Saul built on the solid rock of Christ Jesus. Not moved, but sound. Not pridefully stubborn. Not egotistical vanity. But steadfast in knowing that the love and the holiness of God has come into my life. Young people, old people, no matter who you are, people will look at you with sideways glances. But after you've suffered a little while, God will establish you. Because you'll realize that he was faithful. I can trust him. He's God in my life. His gospel has, has changed my life. Things have come into my life. Things have come into my wife's life. Things have, things have come into my kids' lives. How did Adam, my son, who get established in the faith, but a great adversity came into his life and forced him to pile drive down to bedrock? And say, I will be founded on the solid rock of Christ. I shall not be moved. When he called me one time, and he was full of fear and fret. I says, Adam, I know this. I don't have the answers for you of where the next check's coming from. I don't know what's going to happen with, your, with the brain surgery that took place. I don't know what's going to happen and how it's all going to play out. But I do know this. If you find yourself on the street corner 
and all you've got is yourself, your wife, and your baby in a blanket. Though it be in the middle of the winter, I can assure you, he's there. I can assure you of only that, he's got you. I said that to my own son, because I believe it to be true. I know it's true. I'm not fooled by it, I'm founded in it. I know this, that whatever you're going through, and whatever difficulty has come your way, though doctors come and open up the side of your head and pull stuff out, shut you back up with a, like a door and put stitches around and say, there you go. I know this, though you find yourself on the street corner, though you have nothing else, and you're there with your baby in a blanket and you have no place else to go, I can assure you of this, God's with you. And he'll bring you through. That's established. Established in the faith. That when a neighbor comes out across the street with a gun. And starts pointing at your kids playing in the street. You can tell them. Let's go back out there. We will not be moved. That's not being foolish. That's being founded. God wants to found you. Establish you on the solid rock. That you know what you need to do and how it needs to be done. You see the spiritual battle of what's taking place. And you're founded in him. And you're set in him. And you will not be moved. I want Jesus. The savior of the world in my life. And I will not be moved in Jesus name. If I'm going to be moved, it's because he moved me. If that cloud moves, I move. If that fire moves, I move. If he says stay, I'm staying. Not in foolishness but because you're founded on the solid rock. And many of you are developing those same stories that you've decided. You've come to that place. You know. Yeah, but my husband, and all of a sudden you start realizing, saying, you know what? I'm founded. I'm not foolish. I'm founded. Yeah, but my wife, I'm founded. Yeah, but my mom and dad, I'm founded. Yeah, but the job, I'm finances, and that my health and my... I'm founded. I'm founded. I'm established. October 1989. Gary Cody was established in Christ Jesus. October 1989. I was established in Christ Jesus. Where's your date? Established. Established. When were you brought forth and empowered and established by the Holy Spirit? Established by God. October 1989, Gary Cody was established. Now it was the process of making this little business go. This little business inside. Do you remember my father's business? And bringing you through a process that you're just foolish enough to believe God. And it's not about the amusement and not about being a success and not about having the big church and not about having all the PowerPoint slides and all the drums and trumpets and all kinds of things going and all kinds of people speaking well of you and all kinds of books and literature and everybody calling upon you and having all kinds of... It's about being obedient to the Lord. What would you have me to do? You move, I move. You go this way, I go this way. You go this way, I go this way. You say stay, I say. You say say it, I say it. And you stand firm in the faith. Your child looks at you with a weird, like, what's happened to dad? <laughs> Dad's being weird. Yes! <laughs> yes! I, it's happened to me. But in heaven, I fit in. <laughs> They're crazy about me. They're all like me. Down here, you look at me like I'm a nut. Up there, I'm fruit. <laughs> Don't you want to be fruit? <laughs> Come to Jesus. Establish yourself. When were you established? Month and year. When? August of 89. March what? 
March of 96. December 2009, when he was established. Who established? Say again. September 09, established. September 87, established. When were you established? September 1981. When were you established? Come on. 1983, established. When were you established? 1981. Come on. 1981. 2005. Come on. 75? 2005. 1978, the year we were married. What else? Come on. April 79. Somebody else. Say what? 1975. That's not your age, right? That's the year? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody else established. When were you established? 1965. Established. 85. Is there any more that's going to establish, or do we have that many unsafe people here? <laughs> 81. 2005. As a very young child. Established. 93 established. And from the point of 93, you walked without a problem in the world. Right? All just, jolt, everything just worked out. Or after you suffered a little while, God has established you. Established you. Established you. After you start to realize, because now you can look and say, look what the Lord has done. I was once, but he came into my life. I was unfaithful, but he proved himself faithful. And he's carried me all this way, like footprints in the sand. And I can look back and realize that all of a sudden he came into my life, established me. After I suffered a little while and worked through my own ways, I've come to realize he's faithful. Faithful. And you can trust him. Is that not so? You can trust him. He's God Almighty. He's not just an idea. He's not an opinion. He's not a worldview. He's God Almighty, the great I Am. And He has set up home in your heart. Saints of God, what does He want for us? To be established. Established. That no matter what comes our way, that we have decided that our house should be built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. We're led of the Spirit. We're spirit people. By the Holy Spirit. And we're on our way that we shall cross this great divide and move into eternity in a way that we've never seen before. And we shall see His face. And we shall know His name because His name is inscribed on our hearts. The Lord our righteousness. Don't let this day slip past. Don't let this service slip past. Don't let this message just be another message. Don't squander what God has given into your life. Don't be more concerned about the clock or the buffet table or dinner time. Don't be more concerned about what the one on the left or the right will say, but be concerned about this. What would God have me to do? I'm established in Him. I've abandoned myself to Him. I belong to the Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.